Water is one of the best types in the game, but that actually makes finding the best water type Pokemon really difficult. We're not looking for a needle in a haystack here. We're looking for uh, a fancier needle in a needle stack. A note to the editor, cu cut that out. There have been a lot of really incredible water type Pokemon over the years, but a handful stand out clearly above the rest. Before we talk about the three best water type Pokemon of all time, let's start with some great water types who didn't quite make it to the podium, but deserve to be recognized nonetheless. Starting with Gyarados. What, you think we're gonna talk about the best water type Pokemon of all time and not talk about Gyarados? You think this is amateur hour? Gyarados does a lot of things well. Its stats are good and it's got some great tools in its move pool. The thing that sets Gyarados apart from other water type Pokemon though is its ability. See, competitive Pokemon is entirely double battles and Gyarados's intimidate ability lowers the attack of both opposing Pokemon every single time Gyarados hits the field. It's one of the best abilities in the game, and it works especially well on Gyarados, who has good special bulk, but a worse physical defense stat than Execute. What I think is cool about Gyarados is that it works both as a defensive support Pokemon and as an offensive sweeper. Gyarados can slow opponents down with Thunder Wave and Icy Wind, it can boost its teammates damage output with Helping Hand, and it can shut down set up threats with Taunt. Also, if you paralyze your opponent and hit them with Waterfall, you can make them very angry. If you'd rather your demonic wind kite do more damage, well, look no further than the Dragon Dance set. With Dragon Dance, Gyarados can raise both its attack and speed stats, allowing it to outspeed the vast majority of Pokemon and output huge amounts of damage. Of course, Gyarados does have a problem. Since it's a flying type, but not a bird, it cannot learn Brave Bird or any other good flying type attack. Its best option is, sadly, Bounce, a two-turn move that can easily be blocked by Protect. But Gyarados has benefited a ton from the addition of new mechanics starting in Generation 6. Mega Gyarados actually won Worlds thanks to some help from Pachirisu, and this Gyarados solved its flying attack problem by instead using Earthquake. Starting in Generation 7, Gyarados would be able to use each generation's unique mechanic to actually gain access to a flying type attack. Whether via a Z-Crystal giving access to Supersonic Sky Strike, Dynamax offering Max Airstream, or Terra Flying Terra Blast. With Offensive Gyarados actually on the table, some players even chose to use its hidden ability Moxie instead of the traditional Intimidate. Of course, there is a reason why Gyarados is at the start of our list and not sitting atop the throne. Its reliance on once per battle mechanics makes it somewhat inconsistent as a sweeper. And as a support Pokemon, there are um, some very good Intimidate users that you can use instead. And these Pokemon are very well designed and, and are very well balanced and, and are good for the game. But not every water type Pokemon on our list was always a water type. And if you, like me, know way more about Pokemon than is considered healthy by 10 out of 10 doctors, you probably know our next Pokemon is Rotom Wash. Initially a ghost and electric type, Rotom Wash changed to a water and electric type starting in Pokemon Black and White, and immediately went from having less usage than a washing machine left on the curb to being used as much as a washing machine in a college dormitory. Rotom's stats are good, not great, but they're exceptionally well-rounded because of how they're dealt out and that allows players a great deal of control over how they actually use Rotom Wash. One of the most popular ways of using Rotom Wash is as a bulky attacker, capable of both disrupting opponents and dealing damage. Most Rotom, oh yeah, I'm just gonna say Rotom now instead of saying Rotom Wash every time because you know I'm talking about Rotom Wash, right? Like I was saying, most Rotom run the move Will-O-Wisp, an incredible supporting move that if it hits, burns the target, a near death sentence for physical attackers. This is good because I'm sure that there's not a Rotom out there that would miss Will-O-Wisp when it really counted, right? Going to try for another Will-O-Wisp, will it hit? No, of course not. <laughs> Against special attackers, Rotom can use Thunderbolt and Hydro Pump for immediate damage, making it difficult to ignore. 
Rotom's typing is exceptional. Water and electric as a combination are only weak to grass and ground attacks, and its levitate ability takes care of the latter. What I think is neat about Rotom is that it's an incredibly flexible Pokemon. The standard set for many years was a bulky Citrus Berry set, but choice specs Rotom using moves like Trick, Bolt Switch, Discharge, and Hidden Power saw play consistently, and Choice Scarf saw some usage as well to get the jump on otherwise faster targets. Chestoberry was even used with Rest to win the 2013 World Championships in the youngest division, and Light Screen Rotom placed third in the oldest division that year as well. The funny thing is, Rotom's move pool isn't even that deep. It just makes really good use of the limited moves that it does get. Of course, Rotom isn't placing in our top three. And between you and me, out of all the water types on this list, I think it's probably closer to the bottom. It is a good Pokemon, but it's held back significantly by its stats, and its only water type attack is Hydro Pump, and if you're relying on hitting a Hydro Pump, you're gonna have a bad time. Rotom is able to keep up when the power level is lower, but as more and more powerful Pokemon are introduced each generation, this washing machine eventually ends up out of order. <laughs> so why don't we talk about a Pokemon who has no issue when it comes to its stats? Now, with some quick important context, certain legendary Pokemon are given a special classification known as a restricted Pokemon. This is pretty much every box legendary and a handful of other Pokemon as well. Here's the full list if you want to pause and read. These Pokemon are designated as much stronger than regular Pokemon and are only legal in competitive play during specific rule sets, and you're only allowed to have one or two on your team. This is extremely relevant because choosing one restricted Pokemon means giving up on a different one. Anyway, let's talk about Palkia. This space, uh, banana, is a water and dragon type with great stats and a good move pool. Palkia has excelled the most as a trick room setter that's also able to do good damage. With its great defensive typing, Palkia resists many relevant attacks, being especially good at taking water moves, a very relevant feature in a format with Kyogre. Its stats allow it to work both inside and out of Trick Room. With 100 base speed, Palkia can be trained heavily in speed to try and outspeed a good chunk of the format, or you can ignore its speed completely and instead focus on Trick Room or Tailwind support. Palkia's good overall bulk makes it very difficult to get off the field, and with its high base special attack, ignoring it is about as safe as ignoring a bear in a hot dog eating contest who just ran out of hot dogs. Palkia's move pool is very solid. Its primary support move is Trick Room, reversing the speeds of the battle, but it also has a lot of good offensive moves. Thunder has been used as an answer to Kyogre, and Flamethrower and Earth Power are great options against Steel-type Pokemon. Palkia's signature move, Spatial Rend, is a mostly upgraded version of Dragon Pulse, and though it's weaker than Draco Meteor, it doesn't have the same drawbacks. Plus, it crits more often. From a move pool perspective, Palkia's biggest weakness is that, just like Rotom, it doesn't have a reliable water-type attack. Hydro Pump is really all you're given, and again, with only 80% accuracy, you should never bet on it in a pinch. Dynamax and Z-Moves both gave players a way around this, as both these special moves never missed, and Max Geyser or even set up the rain for future attacks. But in Scarlet and Violet, neither option remains to our abyssal abomination. But more than Hydro Pump's uh, performance issues, Palkia's biggest weakness is that as a restricted Pokemon, it just feels fair. Yes, it's tanky and it hits hard, but its stats don't allow it to outspeed and KO your entire team like Zacian. And its signature move is extremely well balanced, unlike, I don't know, Astral Barrage or ugh, Geomancy. Restricted formats introduce so many Pokemon that make me feel like nobody at Game Freak thought to playtest before unleashing them on the world. And so when you get a Pokemon that feels fair, it kind of feels like a waste to use. That being said, Palkia did make it to the semifinals of the last world championship it was legal in, and they've since introduced the new horsey form, which is just the same except with strictly better stats. So I think there's a chance at least we see Palkia do well in the future. Palkia might feel fair, but trust me, not every Pokemon on this list does. Let's start with a more mild case of brokenness. The new Pokemon introduced in Scarlet and Violet, Palafin. 
Palafin is the only Pokemon from Generation 9 that makes it onto our primary list. Oh yeah, there's another secret list coming later, spoiler alert. But even though Palafin has only been legal like a little over a year, it wouldn't feel right to not include it. As most of you probably know, Palafin was given a signature ability called Zero Two Hero, which causes it to change from a civilian to a superhero when it switches out of the battle, vastly improving its stats. This unique mechanic took a little bit of time for players to figure out, but once they did, Palafin completely took over competitive play. Let's break down what makes Palafin so strong. The easy answer is its stats when transformed. I mean, look at this thing. Of the new Pokemon introduced in Generation 9, not including Paradox or Legendary Pokemon, I mean, Palafin is clearly the best. In fact, of all the Pokemon currently in Scarlet and Violet, Palafin has the fourth highest attack stat, beating out Zacian, Groudon, Rayquaza, and many other powerful Pokemon. And its other stats aren't exactly lacking. The same base speed as Palkia with better than average bulk? Let's just say nobody was complaining about Palafin being too weak. Normally, for a Pokemon to be this strong, there needs to be a drawback, like Slaking, who is weaker than Palafin and also has a much worse ability, or by being a restricted Pokemon who is supposed to be stronger than a regular Pokemon. But Palafin's drawback is relatively easy to manage. You just have to switch it out. By pairing Palafin with disruptive Pokemon that cut opponent's damage output, like Ting Lu, Arcanine, and Amoongus, players were able to make Zero to Hero's drawback feel like zero problem to deal with. <laughs> Palafin also has a good move pool. The new move Wave Crash does so much damage, it can KO Moongus in two hits with a little help. And it also gets a signature attack called Jet Punch. This is a 60 base power move, which might not seem very good compared to Wave Crash's whopping 120 base power. But what you need to know is that Jet Punch is a priority move. Prior Priority moves, for anyone unaware, are extremely valuable in competitive play, since they ignore pretty much every form of speed control except for other priority moves. To balance them, they're kept relatively weak. The standard is 40 base power unless they have some major drawback like Sucker Punch, which is super unreliable, or Grassy Glide, which requires grassy terrain to be set up. Jet Punch has no such drawback, and like I said, is 60 base power, 50% stronger than Aqua Jet. The you know, existing water type priority move that Palafin also gets. Pairing this abnormally strong priority move with Palafin's sky high base attack stat and additional multipliers like Terra Water, Mystic Water, Rain, or Helping Hand, and Palafin is able to KO many faster Pokemon from full HP with Jet Punch. Palafin's remaining moves aren't quite as exciting as the two we've already talked about, which I think is for the best for everyone. It does learn Haze, which was quite valuable for a time thanks to Dendozo being a menace. And I won a tournament using close combat to hit Pokemon like Tyranitar, King Gambit, and Gastrodon. The truth is that Wave Crash and Jet Punch are so powerful that between them and Protect, you kind of don't need your fourth move a lot of the time. Of course, Palafin has suffered such a major decrease in usage that I made a whole video just talking about it. To give you a much shorter version without any of the nuance, Palafin suffers a lot in a faster format with more immediate pressure because it's much harder to mitigate the damage you're forced to take on the turn you switch out. And having a Pokemon that can't do any damage until it's switched out is a huge liability since you're forced to lead it a lot of the time. On top of that, Urshavu's reintroduction to the game means there's an alternative powerful physical attacking water type Pokemon that not only doesn't need to switch out to be strong, but it also hits through protect, has a priority move of its own, and always crits with its signature move. And the Pokemon players used to get around Urshifu also happen to work against Palafin. Pokemon like Amoongus, Gastrodon, and Sunny Day Tornadus, to name a few. Palafin has fallen from one of the most used Pokemon to one third of 1% of usage. But who knows? Maybe the hero will appear again when we need him the most. Which is what I hope happens to our next water type Pokemon, since it really hasn't been used for quite a long time. But this video is about finding the best water type Pokemon ever, so we're still gonna talk about it. It's one of my personal favorite Pokemon, Ludicolo. Howdy, partner. Listen, I don't own a cowboy hat. This is the closest thing I have, okay? Don't yell at me. Today's video is sponsored by the Oregon Trail. Now, if you're about as old as I am, very young and youthful and spry, you probably remember that the original Oregon Trail game 
game was a huge hit during childhood, which is why I am so excited to tell you that a remake of the classic released in November of 2022 with modern gameplay and amazing visuals. This official successor to the global phenomenon blends the historically accurate with the completely wild. I think games like this that blend history with the fantastic are a lot of fun personally, so I was really happy when the Oregon Trail reached out. I played the game for a little myself and had a lot of fun. I caught some fish and also a dude like fell from the sky right in front of me. That was kind of weird. After an incredible launch, the Oregon Trail is now available on even more platforms than ever before. And they're even offering a limited time discount of 33% off to PS Plus users until February 25th. And if you've got good taste and already own the game, the Cowboys and Critters DLC, which releases later this year, will be available for just $5 on release day. If you want to check the game out for yourself, make sure to click the link in the description to discover and play the game. Thanks again to the Oregon Trail for sponsoring this video. Ludicolo is one of the Pokemon on our list who actually feels pretty fair. It's got uh, respectable stats. Calling them good would be a bit of a stretch. Despite this, it's actually won the world championships twice, a feat not many other Pokemon have accomplished. So what makes Ludicolo so good? The short answer is that it's incredibly strong in and against rain teams. With water and grass typing, Ludicolo takes virtually no damage from water type attacks. And with its swift swim ability and its water type moves getting powered up in the rain, it's an amazing Pokemon to have on a rainy day. Ludicolo won worlds in 2009 and 2010, but didn't see very much play during Pokemon Black and White because Kingdra was the main rain sweeper. Though it did win US Nationals in 2013 as an anti-rain option on a sand team. In 2014, however, Kingdra wasn't in the game and many players picked up Ludicolo in its absence. With the Assault Vest item and its good natural special defense stat, Ludicolo was incredibly tanky. And with Fake Out supporting its team, Ice Beam hitting Dragon types, and Giga Drain keeping it healthy and threatening opposing water types, Ludicolo quickly became a staple. And unlike many water types we've talked about thus far, Ludicolo learned Scald, allowing it to actually have a consistent water type attack that could also fish for burn. Offensive Ludicolo has seen some play over the years as well, with popular items being Life Orb or Watarium Z to boost Hydro Pump, and even Absorb Bulb was used occasionally. I used it myself to get second at a regional on my super slow Ludicolo that was slower in rain than my Choice Scarf Politoed, who would activate the Absorb Bulb with Surf. Wait, does this even make sense to anybody? Do y'all understand what I'm talking about, or is this just like an I like your funny words magic man moment? Anyway, Ludicolo has been a niche pick ever since like 2015. Though despite being niche, it's actually had a lot of success, winning regional level events in Latin America, Malaysia, and Singapore in 2018, as well as an international in 2018, the highest level of event aside from Worlds. In 2019, Kyogre was reintroduced, and Ludicolo once again saw success at the top level, in large part due to it being one of the strongest Pokemon against Kyogre, while also being effective against Groudon. In Sword and Shield, Ludicolo didn't see any major success for the first generation since competitive Pokemon began, though my hunch is that this was at least in part due to it not being well suited to take advantage of a Dynamax format. Ludicolo was only recently added to Scarlet and Violet with a DLC, so the big question question in my mind is, will Ludicolo be able to make a triumphant return, or are its glory days behind it? Now, there's just one more Pokemon on my list of good but not the best water type Pokemon, and frankly, it's the Pokemon I spent the most time debating whether or not it belonged in the top three. I've saved it for last because it is undeniably one of the best water types of all time, but I'm going to make the call that it's not quite the pinnacle yet. It's everyone's favorite slug, Gastrodon. At first glance, Gastrodon might seem strange to have above Pokemon like Palafin and Palkia. Its stats are okay. It's really slow, but it's got respectable bulk and a usable special attack stat. But we're not looking for good Pokemon, we're looking for the best of all time. So why is Gastrodon here? The biggest factor is its ability. Storm Drain not only makes Gastrodon immune to all water type moves, it also gets a special attack boost if it's hit with one, and it redirects all water type attacks to itself, protecting its partner from powerful moves. This is an absurdly good ability, and it's the primary reason Gastrodon was able to win not one, but two world championships, both done in the last five years. 
Gastrodon's ground secondary typing helps as well, giving it an electric immunity as well as some handy resistances and a secondary offensive stab move. With two immunities, four resistances, and only one weakness, Gastrodon is extremely difficult to remove, making it a massive problem for water type attackers. Gastrodon's move pool gives it a number of useful tools as well. Recover can be used to shrug off damage, Icy Wind can control the speed of the battle, both Scald and Muddy Water offer valuable secondary effects Effects. Earth Power is a reliable ground attack, and Ice Beam is great coverage against grass and flying types. Gastrodon has benefited a lot from the major mechanics of the last three games as well, with Ground DMZ allowing it to do huge damage despite being bulky, Yawn being an incredible tool against Dynamax Pokemon, Storm Drain shutting down Max Geyser Pokemon like Kyogre and Palkia, and Terrestrialization allowing it to get around its quadruple weakness to grass. Gastrodon is kind of a funny Pokemon. Pokemon because how good it is is strictly dependent on how good other water type Pokemon are, as its main selling point is its ability, and ultimately that's the deciding factor as to why I left it out of the top 3. But if it continues to do as well as it has at the last 5 world championships, I might need to reevaluate my list. Before we jump into our top 3 Pokemon, I want to talk about some other Pokemon that didn't quite make the list but are still worth mentioning. First, for anybody whose primary experience with the game is through fan modes of single battles or the anime, you might be wondering why Greninja hasn't been mentioned. And that's because, in competitive Pokemon, Greninja is very bad. Battle Bond was never legal, and despite how strong Protean is, Greninja's lack of bulk and inability to get one-hit KOs relegated it to a niche pick in 2014, and then never being seen again. There's also two Pokemon I didn't put on this list because they're so new, but I could see them eventually ending up here. The first is Ogrepon Wellspring, which has been dominating competitive play since it was introduced a few months ago. A great ability both in and out of terrestrialization, a deep move pool including a broken signature move, spiky shield, and follow me, and amazing stats all point to Ogre Pond being one of the strongest water types ever designed. It's been omnipresent throughout competitive play since it was introduced, and it's not showing any signs of slowing down. That being said, I didn't include it on this list because it's only been out for a couple of months and I think it needs to prove it has longevity before we can consider it one of the greatest to ever do it. The other Pokemon that's only just been introduced has virtually zero usage, though it might seem strange to put it on this list. It's Walking Wake, the paradox form of Suicune. Now, Walking Wake is not currently considered good, but the reason I'm including it is because I don't think we've had a format where Walking Wake is able to shine yet. See, Walking Wake has a signature move called Hydro Steam, which, unlike every other water type attack, gets stronger in the harsh sunlight. And Walking Wake has Protosynthesis, also powering it up when the sunlight is strong. It also gets Flamethrower and can make good use of Terra Fire as well. In other words, this is one of the strongest Pokemon we've ever seen when it comes to making use of the sun weather condition. I think the reason we aren't seeing Walking Wake right now is because the only drought users are Torkoal and Nine. Tales. But when Groudon and Coridon become legal, I expect that to change. I might have totally missed the mark here, but this is my video, so I'm going to make my prediction. I could see Walking Wake being one of the absolute strongest Pokemon when the next restricted format happens. Okay, we're almost ready for the top three. I just want to quickly list some Pokemon that are really good that just didn't make this list. Dendozo, an incredibly powerful abomination. This one felt kind of bad to leave off, but I just couldn't justify it given how strong the other Pokemon are. Iron Bundle. It doesn't have the results right now to make the list, but it's a great support Pokemon and I like it a lot. Pelipper. A Pokemon with abysmal stats that's done really well in Scarlet and Violet because of its Drizzle ability. Politoed. One of my personal favorite Pokemon who also gets Drizzle that, unfortunately, just can't really keep up with the current power level. Kingdra. A great Rain Sweeper years ago, but it hasn't been able to really make a good appearance for quite a while. Jellicent. One of my all-time favorite Pokemon to use, but I couldn't put it on this list in good faith. Lastly, Suicune, a great, reliable, bulky Tailwind setter that has mostly been a niche pick over the years, but it is still good. Okay, finally, now we can talk about the three best water type Pokemon. Unlike my best fire type Pokemon video, these are ordered from bottom to top. So let's start off with number three, Urshifu. The only thing that most of you are probably surprised about is not seeing Urshifu higher. I did make an entire video on why Urshifu completely breaks the game, 
But for those of you who haven't watched it, I'll give you a little recap. Urshifu is a water and fighting type Pokemon with the signature ability Unseen Fist, which causes all of its contact moves to completely ignore Protect with no drawback. Protect is the primary defensive tool in the game, meaning there is virtually zero defensive counterplay against Urshifu. As if this weren't bad enough, Urshifu's signature move, Surging Strikes, always crits, ignoring attack drops and defense boosts, as well as doing bonus damage. And it hits three times, meaning you can't stop it with a Focus Sash or Sturdy. Add on to all of this, Urshifu's great base stats and ability to use multiple items very well, and you can see why nobody has ever tried to argue that this Pokemon is anywhere close to balanced. Urshifu is one of the main Pokemon players we're trying to beat going into the World Championships last year. But despite that, it still managed to not only win, but also play second, third, fifth, sixth, and eighth out of the top eight competitors. In the events following, Urshifu would go on to win a majority as well as the two most recent events at the time I'm making this video. It's not like Urshifu's success is limited to recency either. After being introduced in Sword and Shield's first DLC, Urshifu would dominate there as well. I even used it to win the Player's Cup 2 due to its great synergy with Colossal. Even attempting to counter Urshifu isn't always possible. Despite Urshifu's presence at Worlds last year, there was not a single Gastronon in the top 16. And even Rocky Helmet Amoongus was unable to reliably beat Urshifu who ran Taunt or Safety Goggles. Your best bet at stopping it is to outspeed it and KO it in one shot or to try and trade favorably with it. So why is Urshifu only number three? Well, it's only won one world championship of the two it was legal for, though it's hard to say if it would have won if we'd had a world championship in 2021. And its overall lack of bulk means it can really only be used as an offensive Pokemon you carefully maneuver into position rather than a bulky Pokemon who can also output huge damage. And it feels like players are getting better at dealing with Urshifu. At the most recent tournament in Liverpool, Urshifu Water wasn't even in the top 12 most used Pokemon, though Urshifu's dark type counterpart was. Urshifu Water still went on to win that event, but maybe that was a feature of the team as a whole being super strong or the player being really good, rather than Urshifu itself being the Pokemon that did the heavy lifting. None of this is to say that Urshifu is bad, and depending on how the next few years go, I could see it taking the number two slot. For now though, the second best water type Pokemon has to go to Tapu Fini. Unlike Urshifu, Tapu Fini is incredibly well designed. I'd argue it's one of the best designed Pokemon ever from a competitive standpoint. Let's talk about why. Tapu Fini gives the player an enormous amount of freedom in how it's used. Its stats imply it wants to be defensive, and if you want, you can use it that way, using moves like Icy Wind, Heal Pulse, Swagger, Nature's Madness, Soak, Haze, Mist, Light Screen, and Taunt to control the pace of the battle and disrupt your opponent. What if you want Tapu Fini to do damage? Well, with a choice specs, you can do that too. Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, Trick, and Muddy Water are spectacular attacks, and you can afford to train Tapu Fini offensively because its natural defenses are so high. What if you want Tapu Fini to be a setup sweeper? Well, with Calm Mind and Leftovers, you can do that too. With its amazing stats and incredibly deep move pool, you can customize Tapu Fini to fit on any team. My favorite thing about Tapu Fini though has to be its ability, Misty Surge. This sets up Misty Terrain, which isn't as flashy as the other three terrain. It cuts Dragon Moves damage in half and it prevents status conditions. But preventing status conditions is massive. How many battles have you lost to a stray, paralysis, burn, or freeze? With Tapu Fini on your team, you never have to worry about a secondary effect stealing the game away from you again. For players who value being in control, this is a godsend. Misty Surge's secondary benefit is being able to shut down the powerful, damage-boosting effects of electric, grassy, and psychic terrain, making it an excellent defensive tool against the other Tapu Pokemon. Tapu Fini isn't as flashy as Urshifu or even as Palafin, but I still believe it to be the second best water type Pokemon of all time. It's won two world championships in 2017 and 2019, and I'm confident that if it were in Scarlet and Violet, it would be doing incredibly well especially since it's so good against both Urshifu forms. So, all that's left is to announce the best water type Pokemon of all time. You probably know what it is. You probably suspected it when you clicked on this video. So, there's no beating around the bush. The best water type Pokemon of all time is... Simipore, baby! That's right, no monkey business here! 
<clears throat> Sorry about that. I think that evil Wolfie got a hold of my script somehow. Anyway, the real best water type Pokemon of all time is Kyogre. To be honest, there's no real question here. Arguably the best restricted Pokemon of all time, Kyogre has won not one, but two world championships. And the years it has won Worlds, it's won multiple other major tournaments and been a top threat going into Worlds. Kyogre's Drizzle ability, or Primordial Sea when it's in its primal form, is incredible, taking control of the weather and powering up its water type attacks. This matters because Kyogre learns the best water type attack ever, Water Spout, a move that does more damage the higher Kyogre's HP is. Almost no Pokemon can take a full power Water Spout, but even if you manage to weaken Kyogre, you still need to deal with its signature move, Origin Pulse, outputting huge amounts of damage. Not that Kyogre's strength stopped there. Its base stats make it not only ridiculously powerful, but extremely hard to get rid of as well, especially on the special side. While its speed stat is a little below what you'd expect for the best water type Pokemon ever, it actually works in Kyogre's favor, functioning with Choice Scarf as a fast sweeper, in Tailwind with some speed investment and a damage boosting item, and in Trick Room as an incredibly tanky attacker. Kyogre's ridiculous flexibility makes it so difficult to handle, as often the ways you beat Scarf Kyogres differ immensely from Trick Room Kyogre. Kyogre is able to take advantage of one of the biggest perks of being a water type, having your water moves get stronger in rain, but it's also able to take advantage of water's defensive benefits as well, with only two weaknesses coupling with its phenomenal bulk, making it one of the hardest restricted Pokemon to remove. I'm personally curious if Coridon and Miraidon will be able to serve as actual answers to Kyogre, but if there's one thing I've learned over the years, it's to never bet against the fish. I hope you enjoyed this video, and feel free to let me know what your favorite water type Pokemon is in the comments. And let me know which type you want me to find the best Pokemon ever of next.